compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act of the State of New Jersey, adequate notice of this meeting of the Atlantic County Board of Chosen Freeholders was provided in the following manner. There's publishings in the press of Atlantic City, the current Daily Journal, Hammond and Gazette, Hammond and News, and postings on our bulletin boards in the County Office Building Atlantic City here at Stillwater and at the County Clerk's Office in Mays Landing. May we all please rise for an opening prayer. We gather to make decisions for our community. May we, may we use only our best skills and judgment, keeping ourselves impartial and neutral as we consider the merits and pitfalls of each matter that is placed before us and always act in accordance with what is best for our community and our fellow citizens. Amen. 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 All face the flag. Attention, Please. salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Bennett? Here. Cortino? Here. Corsi? Days? Here. Fitzpatrick? Here. Gatto? Here. Kern? Here. Risley? Here. And Vermeer? Here. Before we get to our uh, regular agenda, we have our county, esteemed county sheriff here today, and he is going to stand up, Mr. Scheffler, and uh, give us a couple of, I guess, uh, presentations. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Real Report. Uh, there's been a time uh, honored uh, tradition within Atlanta County of presenting new freeholders with a badge. Uh, although they don't come with any law enforcement uh, powers, <laughs> to make that public, um, the badge has been a symbol in our culture and many cultures before us as a symbol of, for protectors, for people that guide us, for people that help uh, stand in the way of, of harm for our communities. Well, that's what you are, each and every one of you, the freeholders of our county. And I would like to be honored to present Ashley Bennett and Karen Fitzpatrick with their free older back. Can you a favor? Could you go get the uh, my badge off my desk? I just want to make a point to that. The, the great big one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a little history lesson here uh, because I am a a little bit of a historian, not so much about freeholders, but in case people don't know it. Uh, if you look in the hallowed halls of this building, you will see photographs of the Freeholder Board during Nucky Johnson's time. And this is not out of uh, Boardwalk Empire, this is real history. At one point there were 38 Freeholders. And uh, obviously in those days uh, patronage ruled and uh, no better place to do it than here. And there's, they were also during the Depression, some of them were paid in script. So you wonder, you know, what did they do it for? But obviously it wielded a whole bunch of power. Moving up to fast forward with us standing up here, uh, Dennis Levinson would usually describe the uh, freeholders as uh, doing nothing and standing for nothing. Of course, we don't abide by that, <laughs> since he was a freeholder himself for about uh, 12 years. So that was why he was on here, or when he left? Well, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm pretty proud of the way this uh, organization functions, whether I'm on it or not. But uh, you know, because we do really try to do the work. By the way, that little badge that you just got there, there is a uh, there is a leather uh, like uh, wallet that goes with that, with a county ID you can have. But just to go to show you how times have changed. This was the badge they gave the freeholders in 1938. <laughs> that is a true county freeholder shield. It was issued by Nucky Johnson that I got from a, a, an antique dealer. Wow, that is crazy. <laughs> and you can't even put it in your car today because if you put it on your back dashboard, it would probably crack open the uh, cardboard that it's made out of. But that's a true solid brass piece. You never saw that, Jimmy? Yeah, they well, your office. Oh, yeah. that's what it's from. Yeah. I haven't made up. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to show you the way, the way things changed from 38 to 2018. So, anyway, anything else you want to bring us up to date on, Sheriff? Not at this time, sir. Okay, well, I make you. Please. Uh, Sheriff, I think it's important that you may want to enlighten the board of freeholders 
uh, of your new officers that you just sworn in, and uh, you're looking forward to bringing the other ones on. Um, I saw it in the paper, so maybe it was. We, we just had a graduating class of uh, eight officers. Uh, they are in their training, field training uh, program at this time. We are uh, looking to bring on another seven officers uh, early April, and I would like to, if it pleases the uh, freeholder board, to bring them here to swear them in. Listen, we suffered through it with our last sheriff. We can suffer through with you. <laughs> bring them up. Thank you. <laughs> also, in that same note, if you would, Chair, will you also attend to share uh, your deputy? Yeah, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Under Sheriff uh, Rich Komar. <coughs> he is uh, in charge of operations for the Sheriff's Department, which includes both of our courthouses. Welcome. Thank you. Well, it's interesting you asked the question, he's gone, he's supposed to have you back. <laughs> well, that's why he's there. <laughs> okay, so that'll, uh, all right, so we expect to hear from you, and I know that uh, it was presented to us, this uh, traveling vehicle for the uh, I don't know if people are aware of it, but there is a uh, going to be a collaborative effort, I think, between Atlantic and Morris County. Well, there's a um, um, Morris uh, County has one right now. Uh, I w myself and uh, my under sheriff uh, Comar actually are going up there on Thursday to uh, observe their operation. Uh, they have a mobile outreach uh, program that they uh, go into the <coughs> communities and they uh, educate on opioid heroin mm -hmm. addiction, mental health issues, suicide awareness, um, Narcan training, and a multitude of different other things. Bridging the gap between services and providers as well as people. And they, they go out and they do uh, multiple different uh, uh, services. They basically put their flag up uh, it, and uh, people have come out, they've serviced over 2,600 people last year. And uh, I, I want to take a version of that and bring it here to Atlantic County. I've talked to some of the freeholders about it, as well as uh, private and public uh, entities that it would be a group partnership with the Sheriff's Office, and I'm looking forward to bringing back more information, kind of get an idea of how we can uh, present it here in Atlanta County. Very good. So please keep us surprised, you know. Yeah, yes. Um, just, uh, yeah. I think I mentioned to, to you before, Sheriff, but, uh, you know, we have the Locata, the local Council on Alcoholism and Drug Abuse. Um, there's a lot of engaged organizations there that might be a good kind of partnership for some of those types of things that you're doing. And then I know you have um, the uh, mental health advisory, again, that might have some, some good, um, you know, partnership opportunities and things like that. So um, I would definitely recommend getting in touch with you. Know. Uh, I agree. We have a lot of services within our county. One of our biggest problems is getting that information out to the general public. A lot of people don't know what we have or what's out there. I envision this uh, mobile recovery uh, group going out and not only uh, you know, educating the public, hey, this is available for you, this is available for you, this is available for you, but also to have the ability on that day to know what beds are available for people with Medicaid, people with insurance, people on scholarship, and see that day if someone comes forward and wants help, take them in that day as well. So I, I know it's ambitious, uh, but uh, I think that we, we can do it as a, a group. All right, we'll be talking about that. I mean, we all have ideas depending on our neighborhoods. You know, there are there are some movements going right now in FC, and in case you don't know it, there's a doctor building a 74 uh, bed facility uh, right on the White Horse Pike, you know, so right. for drug addiction and for interdiction, what have you, you know. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, all right, we're going to move on to our first order of business today, which are ordinances, and you guys can leave unless you want to suffer to the meeting. It's okay, man. Do anything you want to do. Uh, he, he said it this morning. I said, you have to stay there for me. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get educated a little bit. Okay. <laughs> By all means. Uh, ordinance number three. Oh, I did go way ahead of my <coughs> Freeholders, we have uh, a copy of our minutes from January the 16th, uh, and if anybody had, a, if we had a chance to review them, if you were present, any corrections, additions, or comments, otherwise I'll take a motion to adopt. Second. Moved and seconded, and we call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Martino? Yes. Horsey? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Hearn? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Fermina. 
Yes, and now we move on to our first order of business, ordinance number three. An ordinance of the County of Atlantic authorizing acquisition of part of an access easement across property identified as Block 103, Lots 10 and 21, located along 24 East Washington Avenue in the City of Pleasantville, Atlantic County, New Jersey, by means of agreement or by condemnation pursuant to the Eminent Domain Act of 1971, NJSA 20-3-1 and following from the owners of record thereof, final reading. Second. Moved and seconded, an ordinance in its final reading welcomes public input. This ordinance has to deal with uh, easements uh, and a certain intersection in the city of Pleasantville. Uh, and uh, I believe that the county had, needs those easements to proceed. Is there any comment from the public? All right. No public comment. Any freeholder board comment? Any freeholders wish to make comment on this? I'll second that. Okay, Jerry, you want to make a brief description of what's going on there? Yes, yes. Look at it. If you look at this, this is the storage along the front of uh, Green Street. This, this is uh, Washington Avenue. The county bought this, this lot here. You'll see it's from here all the way across. What happens is, this is the alley between where all the stores are located. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is the alley where all the stores are. The way the deed was written was each one of these stores, including the uh, city of Pleasantville, have an ownership on this, this alley. We, we've asked them to give up their easements so that the county could continue our parking lot across here. This here is a drainage pipe. Uh, we, we, we have gotten permission to use this drainage pipe. It's, it's, it's right off the side of our property. And so the drainage pipe will run straight through over here, and this comes out to and will be Franklin Boulevard. So the easements are to allow us to square off the property here, and then the, the city, I guess, has been speaking to all of the uh, business owners, so that they will, be, they will be able to come in off of this road here and then have parking behind the buildings which they don't have. So that's those are the easements we're talking about. Question? Thank you. Yes. yes. Um, this is not meant to be a rhetorical question, but the drainage pipe is in good condition yes, and can handle the water flow? Yes, they, they've gone through and they've looked at Yes, they have. Okay. So yes. we know they happened the Walmart, we know yes. what happened in front of the library in the yes. landing. Yes. Sign. Uh, Chairman, if I may, uh, along the same line, I uh, had a conversation uh, with Mayor Peterson when this came up yeah. a couple times. I asked about the lot, etc. Uh, and then at that, that time, uh, some of the storm was, was not aware or was not willing to give in at that point in time. But um, since then, I think the mayor did talk to all of them. Um, yes. Therefore, uh, they are certainly in support of oh, right. Right. Uh, this easement right. and. and they benefit from it. Uh, yeah. You said they didn't have parking right. in the rear before, so they really gained something. Um, and so I think it's a win-win for everybody. Uh, I don't know if we really put the cart before the horse, but I noticed that uh, Washington Avenue between Main Street and Franklin Boulevard has been detoured for the last few weeks. That means we already started the process um, of putting in the drainage, et cetera, uh, out there. So um, I think you know, it's the right thing to do, and, and I think they're going to reap the benefits of it. And then it gets rid of that muddy lot that we talked about for uh, one stop. Yeah, that's uh, correct. Yes, right. That's so right. That's right. We move it. Right. So I think it's a win-win for everybody. Thank you, Drew. Any other comments? Just, just one. Just that if you ever used a one-stop center, and I've used it in the past, I mean, there was no parking anywhere around it. It's a nightmare with people going around the block. This is going to actually help. We talked about this a couple of years back in here. The county's been working. Uh, towards the goal of getting the additional parking, I'm just glad it's had Polly Act. It's going to be very beneficial to everyone. It's a lot safer, too. And you're welcome. Anything we can do to enhance that fantastic buy of the one stop building will make me happy. We can't afford to lose our tenure. Any other comments? We'll call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Rutino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Dave? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Stern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Pramika? Yes. Okay, moving on to resolutions. 63. 
Amending resolution number 497 adopted October 3, 2017, regarding an alternate method contract with Trapeze Software Group Inc. to provide equipment to install transportation tracking so software, no additional cost. Moved and seconded. Any public input? Shoulder comments? Call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And for me. Okay. Yes, 64. Grant application to the New Jersey Department of Transportation for the fiscal year 2018 annual transportation plan in the amount of six million nine hundred and sixty eight thousand four hundred and fifty six dollars. <coughs> Moved and seconded. Grant application. Any public concerns? Free order comments? All those in favor say aye. Aye. 65. Resolution authorizing competitive contracting for the provision of treatment, home shelter beds, and services for youth in need of temporary out of home placement pursuant to NJSA 40A colon 11 4. Second. Moved and seconded. A resolution authorizing an action. Any public input? Free order comments? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Six, six, please. <clears throat> Change order number one, contract with Herring Fire Protection Limited Liability Company for fire pump replacement at the Canal Fire Training Center for time extension only, no additional cost. Second. Moved and seconded. A no cost, additional time only, resolution, any public input. Free order comments. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Six, seven. Contract with TAG Consulting Group Corporation to establish an indirect cost allocation plan amount not to exceed nine thousand dollars. Moved and seconded. Public interest. Bureau of comments. Call the roll. Bennett. Aye. Bertino. Yes. Corsi. Yes. Days. Yes. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Gatto. Yes. Kern. Yes. Bisley. Yes. And for me. Yes. Sixty-eight, please. Contract with South Jersey Energy to purchase natural gas pursuant to the terms of the awarded contract by Camden County Freeholders on behalf of the South Jersey Power Cooperative in the amount of $700,000 for a two-year period. Second. Moved and seconded. Any public input on this uh, contract? Freeholder comments? This uh, particular resolution, I had a concern that we were purchasing gas outside of uh, South Jersey Industries, which is in our county, and that we were purchasing gas elsewhere, I was corrected. This is actually the non-controlled side of South Jersey Industries business, so we're still doing business with South Jersey Industries. FYI. And it does allow them to contract late rates below the BPU control rates, and that's, that's the advantage. We'll be saving a lot of money. Field comments? Call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Grizzly? Yes. And Prometa? Yes. Resolution 69. We know that we with the South Jersey Transportation Authority for the provision of community shuttle services along the Route 40 and Route 54 quarters in the amount of $150,000. Okay. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. <laughs> Public input. Criminal comments. Chairman. Criminal Risley. Just briefly, uh, I say uh, thank God for the Pasquale Sykes Foundation. They do uh, a tremendous lot of good to help government. And, uh, they even uh, helped out the South Jersey Economic Development District uh, at one time. So uh, my hat's off to that, that foundation, the people that uh, have uh, made it possible. Thank you. Very good. If anyone doesn't know, this is a very excellent. Uh, I'm sorry, Thriller Bertino. That was all. I just wanted to comment on it. That we've had the opportunity in the last few years to utilize these services out there. I know the people on the western end, down in Buna Vista, Buna Borough, up to up in the Hamptons and all. Uh, they're, they're very excited about the opportunity to have that. So I think it's really important, especially in the rural areas where you need some connectivity to bring people to. Uh, they're going shopping or where they may be going. So it worked out real well for us. Very pleased to be here. Thank you. Any other comments? Mr. Uh, Chair? I made to uh, uh, How many years? At least three. Three years. Uh, this will be our third year. And Mr. Chair. Castle Chair, Sykes, right? Yeah. Mr. Um, Chair, I just wanted to. Mr. Gag, I invited Mary Lou Gagney today because the next series from 69 down through roughly. Uh, 
77, uh, all, all dealing with the Division of Intergenerational Services, our Office on Aging, our Office within the Can we combine and adopt? <laughs> but Mary Lou is here. I guess Mary Lou to come because ra rarely you know, do, do you see uh, Mary Lou. She stays under the radar, but uh, it's one of our larger divisions, pro probably 125, 130 individuals. And as you see, there's lots of money flow through there. This is, this is one of those uh, agencies where we get a lot of grant funding through the, through the federal government, you know, the um, Urban Mass Transit Act. Uh, uh, the area plan, which is the Older Americans Act. So Mary Lou is here. If there are right questions, you know. Mary Lou, could you stand up for a second? So who don't know Mary Lou? It's Mary Lou Gagnon. She runs our intergenerational <coughs> services. I have had uh, the privilege of uh, being able to interact with her for my own family and friends, and does an excellent job. <coughs> Any comments of your own here, Marilyn? Thank you. Well, specific to this resolution, the Pascal Sykes Foundation matches this grant from New Jersey Transit. It's $150,000 of innovative grant funds, and then Pascal Sykes matches that 100% and any overage to run the program. In January, um, South Jersey Transportation Authority mm -hmm. actually provides the service, and they provided <coughs> 1,003 trips to with an average of four, 48 uh, patrons a day using the serial service. So that's great. It's free of charge to them, right? Yes. No, there is a, there is a dollar. There is, I mean, a do I'm sorry. There's a dollar for seniors, right? For anybody right? Anybody, one dollar. Yes. And they can go shopping on places where they couldn't yes. go shopping. Yes, up and down before. the Route 54 corridor from Hamilton to Richmond. Well, we appreciate what we do, Mary Lou. And how long you go in the county now? Oh, in June, I'll, I've completed 35 years. I know it was a piece. And as far as the remaining contracts that you'll approve of all renewers for Older American Act services, um, which is legislation signed by President Johnson, believe it or not, in 1965. And it's designed, there is no means testing. We do not just to plan and provide programs for individuals in this county age 16 and older. So you'll see some of our senior centers. We, our kitchen prepares and delivers about 500 home delivered meals about the same amount for our congregate 10 senior centers. Um, but we were designed to help keep both, help our individuals and our families and caregivers remain living independent in the community. It's not unusual for us to be serving people well into their 90s, living alone on home deliver meals. But, and another thing, just we usually don't uh, tout ourselves, but in the state of New Jersey, 10 years ago, it was 93% long-term care, people in nursing homes, we're down, down to 50%, and that's a really tremendous improvement. That people are now living at home with community-based services. That, that's one reason why. That's one reason why we been speaking so much about the nursing home and other alternatives for the nursing home. One of one of which is we, we now have a rehabilitation center. We have a whole wing that deals with rehabilitation, which means people coming in there are not staying there long term. They're coming in, rehab, and then the wrap, and then the uh, the potential to get the veterans uh, to use it as a long-term care facility. Because most people are staying in the community now; they're not being placed in nursing. Thank you. Okay, so we're right, right. Yes, uh, we're on the course. I was cut off. Um, Actually, you stepped aside. But that's okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I wanted to answer my question anyway. So basically, you got up. So he's basically telling us, don't ask you no more questions because you just answered everything. <laughs> and I like how you did it. So, uh, <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other questions? We are looking at Resolution 69. Call the roll, please. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Bisley? Yes. And Formica? Yes. 71. Renewal competitive contract subgrant agreements with various vendors for Older Americans Act area plan services, amount not to exceed $248,241 for all contracts. Second. Moved in second. Public input here. Call the comments. <coughs> Call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Formica? Yes, 72. Renewal competitive contracts with various vendors 
for the provision of home care services under the Division of Welfare in the amount of $225,000 and state respite grant program in the amount of $135,138. Seconded. Seconded. Public input. Further comments? Call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Firmica? Yes, 73. Renewal competitive contract sub grant agreement for Older Americans Area, Older Americans Act Area Plan Services with South Jersey Legal Services, Inc., amount not to exceed $9,000. Second. Moved and seconded. Any public input? Any other comments? I'll call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Fermica? Yes. 74. Renewal professional services contract with Barron Jewish Older Adult Services for the provision of physical health and health education to eligible Atlantic County seniors, amount not to exceed $36,000. Move. Second. Moved and seconded. Public interest, trail of concerns, call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And for me. Yes, 75. Renewal competitive contract with Barron Jewish Older Adult Services provides senior center site management amount not to exceed $135,000. Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Public interest in this resolution. Trailholders? Call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Firmica? Yes, 76. We know a competitive contract with Caring Inc. to provide nutrition site management at the Jeffries Tower Senior Citizen Senior Center, amount not to exceed $53,250. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Public? Three holders? Call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Horsey? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And for me. Yes, seven, seven. Renewal competitive contract renewal with Milton and Betty Katz J JCC to provide nutrition site management at various locations throughout Atlantic County, amount not to exceed $326,368. Second. Moved and seconded. Public concerns. Three holders? Call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Firmica? Yes. 78. Appointment of Maharshi. Maharshi. Did I say that right? Yes. yes. Is Maharshi. that a. Okay. Maharshi B. Patel to the Atlantic County Economic Development Advisory Commission for a term to expire on July 1, 2021. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Anyone in the public wish to speak to this appointment? Hear all the comments? Yeah. Yes. I, I know Mr. Patel to be a very caring and involved individual who is eager to help our county and we're very pleased that he's received. Thank you. Any other comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Patel is appointed. 79? Authorizing consent for a roadway solicitation event by Oceanville Volunteer Fire Company Number 1 at the intersection of Pitney Road and Great Creek Road in the Township of Galloway on Saturday, April 28, 2018 and Saturday, August 25, 2018 from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Moved. Second. Moved in. Seconded. Any public input on this roadway solicitation? Elders? All those in favor say aye. 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 80. Supporting a bill requiring a warning sticker on containers of opi opioid medications. Sponsors, Karen L. Fitzpatrick and Ashley R. Bennett. Second. Moved and seconded. <coughs> Question uh, about it. Uh, I, uh, I got a uh, note yesterday from uh, uh, Fitzpatrick that the effective is not yet a bill. It's a bill. It hasn't been presented to the opioid Task force, the county task force. Yes, it, it is in the assembly. It is in the assembly. Yeah. Simply has nothing to do with the public. Okay. Okay. Holder Fitzpatrick, you have the floor. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, when I saw that Assemblyman John Armato was making, uh, uh, putting this bill forth in the assembly, 
I was um, pleased and also surprised that this wasn't already a thing. Um, very surprised. And it's very important to me, and I didn't know how I was going to speak about this because I really haven't spoken about it in public. Um, but this is very important to me because it has affected my family firsthand. Um, I feel that a warning on opioid uh, bottles might catch somebody's eye before they start uh, using drugs in, in a way that is not prescribed for them. I had a surgery last summer and I got 42 Oxycontin pills and I harassed my doctor a lot about that. But um, the, what happened for me was uh, a high school kid had a sports inju injury, had a few extra of these pills and they started partying and unfortunately my son became addicted. And, uh, uh, so um, it led to other things, and he is in So this is very important to me, and I'm pleased to be able to uh, say that it's going to become a law in New Jersey, and I'm glad that the people of your staff are going to support Thank you, Priel. Any other comments on this? Priel Bertino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I also had the opportunity to speak to the Assemblyman Amato a couple of weeks back. Uh, when we were discussing his uh, language and what he was doing with his bill <coughs> that he was presenting. And I was actually very surprised that that language wasn't already in place that opioids should be indicated on every level. I know when you look at a lot of the prescriptions we all pick up, uh, they have warning labels of everything that's going to kill you usually if you take it. But uh, something as important as that, indicating that it specifically has that in, in it, surprised me a lot. So when I told him, bring it to the freeholder board as he, you guys have done. And I told him I'd be happy to support it. it. Makes sense. It should have been done a long time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other comments? I didn't call any lawmakers. I called my pharmacy and asked uh, Funding Pharmacy if it was true that there are no warnings on opioids. And it's unbelievable that this family that, that controlled the opioids for about 40 years in this country were able to lobby our Congress to not have this warning put on them. And uh, our, little, our little action here today, I hope it speaks volumes. It's ridiculous. All right, any other comments? Who will call the roll? Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Orsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risling? Yes. And Flamika? Yes. 81, please. Resolution of support for Brigantine's opposition to the state's takeover of the North End Beach in the city of Brigantine. Sponsor, Richard R. Days. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Trailer Days, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This um, initially was brought to my attention by uh, council members in Brigantine. I've been following it closely um, for, for several weeks now. Um, they were hoping that they could negotiate with the incoming administration. Basically what happened is for decades, Brigantine and the state um, Department of Environmental Protection have had an agreement uh, where the North End Beach would be protected, but also accessible for the residents of not only Brigantine, but the county and tourists as well, um, for, for kayaking and uh, for artists to go out and uh, you know, paint the scene and take pictures. Um, for whatever reason, um, at the end of last year, the state Department of Environmental Protection uh, chose not to renew this agreement with the city of Brigantine. Um, they're going to take over total control of North End Beach. Um, Brigantine had been negotiating with former Governor Christie's administration. When um, Governor Murphy was elected, they had hoped that they could renew negotiations and hopefully get the uh, agreement back on the table. Um, up to this point, that, that hasn't been happened. Um, in fact, when Brigantine uh, addressed some questions to the state, the state said that, uh, you know what, during the busiest times, May through September, we're going to shut down um, all access to the beach um, except for 4x4 four four, um, permits and uh, fishing. So um, Brigantine had some, some issues still. There's a hearing tonight at Brigantine um, at the North End School at 6 o'clock. But they're hoping to negotiate further. As of now, um, the city has asked for our support in their opposition to the uh, total takeover of the North End Beach for the Department of Environmental Protection. Thank you. Phil, of course, uh, took it to, uh, I'm, I'm going to support it. Um, however, the, I have two questions. One that I do, I am aware that there's a meeting at 6 o'clock tonight, but do you expect any representatives from the state there? Or is this just a community meeting 
to uh, voice your opposition to the state tape? No, the DEP will be there, and the, uh, hopefully they're doing hoping for a large turnout to express the people that do actually use the beach and, and are aware of the environmental um, hazards that do exist. That's, that's fine. The second question I was going to uh, uh, ask you, uh, what have, if any, have our legislators weighed in, our Senate and our two assembly? You know, just whatever I say is what I, I heard actually this morning. Um, Deputy, I spoke with um, Councilman Sarah. I know uh, Deputy Mayor Andy Simpson was on the radio this morning. He said they received a letter from Senator Chris Brown. Um, again, I'm just whatever I'm saying now is not necessarily hearsay, but it's kind of third-hand information. Um, supposedly the state is now saying that the federal government has some issues and concerns as well, which is why the state decided to kind of come in with the heavy hand. Um, so again, they're hoping to maybe hash that out tonight. Oh, wow. I, I don't want to keep going. I just, sure, I, again, I don't and have I'm glad answer, you heard so. from Chris Brown. I, 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 I need to I, know I where our Senate people because. Um, when Christie was in, the Republicans were in charge. And it seems with Christie on his way out the door, he's done every single thing he can to jam it down the throats of the final count. Now that the administrations have changed, and they only been there a little over a month and a half, uh, and it's a lot on their plate, uh, but this is not an issue to just come up because a lot of those same people are still working for the state. And so um, I think it, it, it is potent that our assembly people in conjunction with our senator, um, you know, be the fighters on behalf of those in Brigham Team. And if you brought back, they've been back there, you know how nice it's been kept, et cetera. Uh, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Uh, it is the difference between that being taken over from the state than Atlantic County trying to give McClintock Park to Atlantic City um, for a totally different reason. Um, so the point being is, is that if it's not broke, don't fix it. Uh, and I hope that the people of Brigham Team and those who use that beach will come out tonight. Uh, I plan on stopping by. Um, I can't stay because Frank already told me I've got to be out by a certain time, and I plan on being out. Thank you for affirming that, uh, <coughs> Commissioner. Yes. Fitzpatrick. I was uh, very excited. I just got my first four-wheel drive vehicle in my entire life, and I was excited to be able to drive on That's days. why they did this. <laughs> However, <laughs> have you drove over there yet? <laughs> now, I did some reading, and I found out a couple of interesting things. The uh, part that they want to close is owned by the state, the state-owned natural area, and uh, what they want to do is offer fishing permits only and allow only 75 vehicles per day on that part of the beach. And the reason they want to close the beach from May to September is because there are several different breeds of endangered birds that nest there. They do the same thing on Dog Beach um, in Egg Harbor Township. They <coughs> close the beach there from May to September. You can't use it because of the nesting. And that's part of why we live in this beautiful place, because we have endangered species that we care for. And so I think <coughs> maybe we should hear what happens <coughs> at this meeting tonight, since the DEP is going to be there, and see what happens. Well, I think it's clear. Well, I, I'm not really answering that meeting, but I think it's clear what they say. Um, it might not be clear with DEP and other state. Um, but I, and, I, I, and I get your point. Uh, however, you know, every time I think about these in species, I think about when they came to Atlantic City, they took up a whole entire neighborhood to run a tunnel through. We argued the birds, <coughs> the the turtles, et cetera, et cetera. And they came right through it and wiped the whole damn neighborhood out. They put a $330 million tunnel through. DEP, um, State of New Jersey. It might have been under the Whitman administration. It was. Um, and so they pick and choose. Under, Gr under Gormley's guys. <laughs> so my point is they pick and choose when they want to do it and when it's in their best interest not to go in and upset the apple cart uh, on Beta Field. If I don't cut the grass by a certain time on Beta Field, when those birds are nesting, you cannot do nothing out there. You can't move. It's a ten thousand dollar fine every time you get caught. Um, so the after the game is to be in front of the the bird season. So, and, and I get what you're saying, so. 
I, I'm sure those people are going to make the concerns and requests known very clearly. Other things? No, I mean, my understanding is that there was a meeting on Thursday night between the Chief Department of Environmental Protection and the City Council. Um, a lot of issues still need to be addressed. Uh, the 4x4 permit is a state permit, um, not the Green Team permit, and so for access to other parts of the Green Team beaches. Um, I guess their issue is, is that for, for years, for decades, they've had this agreement in place. They've preserved the, the plovers. Um, the people that have had used it for kayaking and, and uh, the artists that have went out there have been aware of the sensitive nature of it. Um, None, none, nothing's really changed other than the DEP saying, you know, we can't secure it, so we're going to kind of shut it down completely between May and September. So here, here, here's the argument. I went to uh, city can I went to city council meeting last week, and uh, you're right. The reason we have such beautiful things here is because of preservation. But for 47 years, Brigantine has been doing the preservation. They're the officers. And the piping clover, of which there's only two nests that they can find on the whole island, is the concern. What North End of Brigantine, and for my first permit was 1972, I think I was on that beach. But through the years, it has become almost a natural habitat for red fox. What's the number one enemy of piping clover uh, eggs? The red fox. Now, what was told to me by the mayor was that a uh, parks officer came down at some point and saw an unleashed dog. That, in their mind, meant that the arg made the argument the Brigantine wasn't enforcing their code, therefore the state had to come in and do it. My argument's going to be, if I go to speak tonight, if the officers that have been enforcing the park for 47 years are on the same island a half a mile away. Do you think they could do a better job than sending down, you know, a, a park rangers from 100 or 60 or 40 miles away? And the less activity may actually entice the fox to be more liberal, and I'm, that's a stretch on my part, but, uh, and as Rich pointed out, you know, not that it's a revenue thing, but a lot of people enjoy that as natural. And it has to do with kayakers, fishermen, you know, naturalists, what have you. And at some point, there's there's 300 people on there in, in the summertime, so you're going to be turning a lot of people away on peak days. So we'll have to see what they have to say. But the strength of the Brigantine's argument is we're doing it. We're the environmentalists here. If you want us to do something different, we can still do it, manage it. You know, of course, uh, you know, I guess that we comes another state park, I guess, the governor can enjoy yeah, it whenever he wants. So. <laughs> he won't be able to beat it. Because it's closed. <laughs> All right. Any other comments? We'll call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. It's Patrick? No. Gatto? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And for me. Yes, and that brings us to the end of our printed agenda. We will have reports of special committees, freeholders, any special committee reports we'd like to make today at this board meeting. Uh, Chairman, if I may, you may. The jail committee met this morning in conjunction with, as uh, a matter of fact, uh, freeholder Maureen and uh, uh, freeholder uh, Risley and I attended a meeting here with the sheriff, the county prosecutor, the police chief of Pleasantville in Atlantic City, um, Jerry. Uh, county administrator. I was not there. The chairman was not there. Um, there was probably about 14 of us uh, there, and the purpose of the meeting was, as you know, this board passed a resolution uh, to ask the attorney general uh, and the county prosecutors to do a buyback, gun, gun buyback program. In order to do that, you have to do a lot of steps before you even get there, identify funds and uh, sponsors, etc. Uh, we thought, at least I thought, that meeting was very productive this morning um, and it's my understanding the county prosecutor uh, and the chiefs will be meeting with the attorney general I believe they said next Thursday um, they will certainly give them our suggestions and recommendations and ask them to do it to buy into the, the theme of the um, gun back by program it's <coughs> um, always a thought it won't happen in our community but we all know just what happened in Florida uh, 17 innocent people uh, it's just a matter of time, whether it's in Atlantic City, Linwood, Market, etc. Um, but again, they're going to get all the guns off the street, the answer's like, 
um, and then once we turn them guns, they're going to turn them in the answers. No. But but if we sit by and do absolutely nothing, we are just as guilty as, as, as the rest of them. Uh, as as government officials, uh, people want to hear from the elected officials. What are you doing? I mean, they know we can't save the world, uh, but we make it the attempt uh, to a good faith effort. And uh, they said the last gun back by gun buyback program was in 2013 and directly pre-order, I think it was about three hundred thousand dollars when they collected yep. that seven hundred <coughs> guns or so. Um, you can you know you can move the number <coughs> down to what you get for per gun, but I think it is important that we do something. And um, I thought it was a very productive meeting this morning and we thank them all for coming. I certainly yield to my colleagues and they certainly can get ready. Thank you for your opening, Sean. Chairman, I thought it was a great meeting. I, I learned a lot. I did not know a lot about the gun buyback program. I attended my reply. Um, I also learned, and I was a little surprised at this, and how little money was in the forfeiture account in the county prosecutor's office. Uh, that was a shock. Looking at the $10,000. So any kind of a program that that we're going to possibly do in this county, but it's going to have that help, obviously, with the state attorney general's office with funding. There's going to be, have to be some local businesses to help out to buy into this type of program, and it's going to have to be probably tailored and tweaked in order to uh, try to make something happen here. It might be a one day. Um, the intent is always to try to get local firearms, handguns off the streets. And what happens as we learned from this meeting this morning, that um, many times people from other states bring guns in from relatives and so on and so forth to get the 250 bucks or 100 hours, whatever the number happens to be, they can get paid. So it's uh, it was a great meeting. Chairman did a great job with it. It was uh, very uh, enlightening, but uh, it's not going to happen overnight. There's going to be a lot of thought and work put into this, and uh, hopefully we can get some help from the state and try to put together some kind of program here to make it happen. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments on this? No, I just want to say, you know, reiterate what you're saying. It truly was enlightening. You know, some of the numbers and figures, they were all very much uh, for them doing this. Um, you know, the numbers that they put out, they said it's not necessarily you're looking at the mass shooting, you're looking at the individual and the numbers of people being harmed by just the individual shooter. And uh, they, you know, they were, uh, they, they really schooled us you know, yes, quite a bit this morning. Yes, so, uh, and there were minutes taken of you. So also, finally, in that comment, if I may, Chairman, uh, as you know, when we passed that resolution, I said if we're going to walk the walk, we got to talk the talk. The county itself will have to step to the plate, so it's not that it's coming as a secret. We've got to figure out some kind of way to be a partner in it. And, um, you know, to what it, now, if everybody does a little, nobody's going to have to do a lot. And so each one of these entities get involved. If we can't get the Attorney General's office to fund the whole thing, we all going to have to chip in. So, okay, and who's going to reach out to the Attorney General? Uh, the prosecutor sure. and the other guys. Uh, are you in that meeting, sir? No. Um, prosecutor and I think the police chiefs are going to be talking to him and they can oh, okay. give us a report. Because we, yeah, we're not going to do it. I mean, they got to run it, but they can talk to us about kicking our end. And, yeah, and they were taking. And the, the attorney general has to approve it. And Daniel was taking the um, resolution with them. That is correct. Okay. All right. Any other reports of special committees? <coughs> Any other reports? Not seeing none. Unfinished business. Not any new business, any new business to report today at our meeting. We've all received written communications, correspondence, various forms from the Free Order Board members. Any members wish to discuss any correspondence? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I don't recall if I'm necessarily correspondence, but I see that uh, Egg Harbor City uh, passed a resolution uh, calling for the defeat of. Uh, Internet gambling and state racetracks. And this is, again, this issue has come full circle again when we, adopt, we adopted some time ago a resolution opposing this, and it's back at us again here.
So the State Assembly recently approved a bill introduced by Assemblyman Ralph Caputo, Democrat Essex, to allow internet casino gambling at New Jersey racetracks. And I think we should go on record again. I would like to sponsor a resolution opposing this. I would co sponsor. Okay, sounds good to me. Maybe we should all sponsor it. Sounds good to me. Maybe a unanimous sponsorship. Okay, that sounds great. Anyone else uh, wish to report from anything from written communications? No? <coughs> well, Chairman, if I may, I don't know if it's all the written communications, but I know most of it, not all the free of Receive correspondence that Atlanta Cape Community College will be having a written type of bar. I believe it's at 11 a.m. Yes. Yeah. Or one of the new buildings. The student center? Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, anything else? In correspondence? I know there's a meeting up to the public. Anyone in the public wish to come forward, please feel free to do so. Please state your name and purpose. Steve Young, several purposes. First, I want to say congratulations to the uh, new elected freeholders as well as the sheriff. Uh, it's beginning to be a balance in here, male and female. And <laughs> so that's a good thing. This is the first time we had four <laughs> females in one time. <laughs> exactly. So I uh, congratulate you on that. But uh, also, it's two and two, two Democrats, two Republicans. Is that right? Yeah. Good <laughs> balance, man. That's equal opportunity. Yeah. And it's the best. Uh, I want to talk about several condi uh, things. One is the condition that the uh, Lennox uh, County Jail, um, there's some, on the female uh, part, there's been some situations that uh, we probably want to look into. I, I have uh, someone here with me today that, that, that will talk about more about it, but on a personal level, uh, aside from the meeting, uh, we would like to discuss that. Talk about some solutions and deal with that. Uh, also, when it comes to the, the bail reform, um, uh, we, we, we are aware that a lot of people have been, uh, been released from it. It seems to be working, but cost effectively is an issue. But there's some people been falling through the cracks, basically staying in jail uh, more than 90 days, waiting for a court date. And uh, that is really unacceptable when you've uh, been accused and you have been found guilty and you're just sitting in the jail cell, uh, as, as well as it's costing the county money. Uh, for, for those type of individuals. So uh, we need to look into that uh, to find out why that is actually happening uh, with the bail reform the way it is and come up with some type of uh, solution. Uh, I'm curious about uh, the process for your appointments. Uh, uh, what appointments are actually available uh, to the public? You know, uh, those appointments that you, that you make as well as uh, the vacancies or when it may come up. I don't know if it's on your website or, or something where the public would know uh, when those opportunities are available for those different appointments. Uh, do you have, back a, do you have a specific <coughs> interest, Steve? <laughs> uh, possibly, yes. Only because I know you for 40 years? <laughs> 40 plus. <laughs> okay. Now, Steve, you just told somebody you just turned 35, so somebody does have a birthday. Uh, it's about 40 years. Now, if you, have, if you have something specific, please feel free to talk to any one of us. Sure. You know, but the executive puts all the appointments up, as you know, and the freeholder board here is the one that, uh, you know, codifies it and we can vote on it. So any area of expertise would be welcome. That's good. On the bail reform, you said fall through the cracks. I thought you meant perps that should have been locked up. So we got a lot of them. Mm -hmm. the cracks. We definitely will look into the ones that are over the 90 days, but mostly that's a function of the judiciary, the visitage, the judges. We have no say in that, but by and large, uh, I think uh, our big concern is that certain people that should be locked up are not being locked up, and we need to, I guess, amend it on both sides. In our humble opinion. Um, and also when it comes to the visit, uh, there, there was a time we could actually visit the facility in Lamb County Jail. We would like to look into possibly doing that. Um, the gun buyback, gun buyback program, just uh, you know, from our observation, observation basically in the community in the street, uh, a lot of times you give cash back. And uh, that's all not, always not a good source sometimes. Maybe you may, may want to consider giving them a Walmart card, gift card. How about food? <laughs> 
you know, something to shop right or right. Uh, those type of things. I know most people, you, know, you give a hundred dollars certificate to you shop right. You know where it's right. gone, right? <laughs> you know, it may be considered a more incentive to turn it in a weapon to feed your family. Uh, just, just a suggestion. And we'd be more than happy to be part of those meetings uh, on those concerns, because it definitely affects our community. Uh, again, I want to thank everybody, and definitely congratulations to you all, and definitely to you as well, Sheriff, and we look forward to working with you. If, if I may, before you step away, fairly gorgeous. One, those guidelines when we talk about buyback and the money, and all that done by the Attorney General's office, is something we certainly can talk about in our next meeting. How to help that. However, I think you would agree that the, the goal is to get those guns off the street. And if I just got to give you the cash, we don't give you a check, we give you cash. Uh, to get those guns off the street, we're going to do it uh, that way. But we got to follow with the guidelines. They came in this morning with the with the book, and it was a lot of information that we didn't even know about, but something that we could ask them about and see if it can go that way. If not, um, you know, we've got to go by what they tell us. The second thing is, is that, um, Steve, I was out at the courthouse last week, um, the drug court, and I visited a couple other courtrooms, and it's interesting you would raise that question, because some people were in there, and I heard one lady behind me say, he's only in here for one charge, and then when the judge starts reading it off, a whole lot more than one charge. <laughs> um, and for whatever the charges were, I didn't get into all of that. And it, like, the lady's eyes just kind of like lit up where they come from. So they could have had warrants that was already sitting out there. I, I had no clue. But if, if there's a problem um, that then they passed the 90 days, again, that's something that has to go through the judiciary system. Um, you're not strange to that. But if they got more than one, one charge on them, the judge holds them. Uh, there can be a flight risk. The judge, I, I noticed the last two judges out there has been real tough on these guys, but apparently they haven't been coming to court. Uh, and that's not everybody, so you can't paint the brush with every single person out there. Um, but I think uh, if you do the statistics, uh, they tell you what the bail reform in, in, in place, the number of people, and certainly as you indicate, come out of jail, we're not paying that uh, three meals in the count all day long. Um, but there's a lot that we don't know that happens behind the scene that the prosecutors and the judges are discussing about an individual. Uh, but if there's somebody out there other than that, that needs to be looked at. And I mean, we can't tell them what to do. But well, could just like recommendation. those issues as, as well as uh, bail reform, as well as the uh, buyback program and everything else, you know, these guidelines are basically made by the legislators who don't even walk the street most of the time. And they need to be hearing from the people that's affected the most some of the time. So those are, and they, and they can be amended, you know, and we need to look into amending it to fit where it actually can work and with the solutions that's coming from the community as well as some of you. Uh, I thank you again. Oh, oh, you're not, I'm not done. You're not done. I'm not done. You're not done. You're not done. You're not done. You raised a question because I serve as the jail committee chairperson and our wardens here. Uh, I am a little surprised that you would come and make a comment that you'd like to get in. Uh, you know, we've had a communication. And I've always been able to communicate to our warden uh, the issues that have been raised. And um, we certainly hope that we can get to talk to her before you leave. But I was a little taken back that you've come today uh, to raise that issue without even giving me the opportunity to meet with the warden to, to address those issues. Uh, because there were other issues that came up uh, that came to my attention that when we addressed them, some of them were active and some of them wasn't from different people in the community. Uh, so I think we have a good communication with our warden uh, in the jail, uh, and I don't want it to be a reflection that, you know, when people ask, they're not getting the information. Some things are not privy. Uh, because you're outside and not a family member, they can't tell you everything that's going on uh, in the jail. Uh, I had a, an issue a couple weeks yeah. ago called here, yeah, a gentleman who converted over to Jewsism, and they couldn't move him because there was a problem until the rabbi got there. All that wasn't out there, and everybody thought, oh, he'd be mistreated. It was far from the truth. So there's a lot of stuff that happened that the public is not privy to having, uh, but a phone call to the warden gives you a better understanding in terms that it's being worked on, it's being looked into. I can assure you that it's not this, they told you it was that. Uh, and I think that communication has been well, well uh, uh, open uh, with her. And um, you know, whatever those issues is, we certainly as the chair of the jail committee, we'd be more than happy to, uh, to try to address it. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Uh,
<laughs> I reserve the balance of my time. Anyone else wish to come up and speak? Please feel free to come up and speak. Okay. Anyone else? All right. And we'll close. Yes, we'll close the public portion of the meeting. Anything further to go to the order? Early day. Just to have um, two items. So we earlier approved the um, a road with solicitation for Oceanville Volunteer Fire Company. Um, I just want to. Again, a call from the volunteer fire department. There were a lot of them were referring for members, um, but those of us who live in communities who are serviced by volunteer fire departments um, receive tremendous savings in their property taxes. So I would encourage anyone, I know there are some that came to the back, if you're in a hurry, I um, encourage anyone who sees the volunteer fire departments to, to support them. Um, Oceanville Fire Department is also having a beef and beer fundraiser um, March 9th, Friday, March 9th, at Fred and Apples in Smithville at 6 o'clock. It was another effort for them to uh, receive some funding. And um, Family Promise of Atlantic County is having a fundraiser this Thursday. They're working with a lot of churches in Atlantic County to provide support for a number of homeless families in our area. They're having a fundraiser Thursday, this coming Thursday, at Five Guys this <coughs> evening from 5 to 8 p.m. Okay, thank you. Anything else really go to the order? Chair, sure. yes. just a reminder sure. to uh, all of our uh, residents and visitors that next week is restaurant week, Wednesday restaurant week. Make sure you get your reservations in, go frequent our delicious restaurants, not only in Atlantic City, but in the surrounding area. It's a really great time to go try it out at an affordable price. So, just a reminder. It's a, it's a great thing for people that don't know about it. It's, you know, uh, 50 or 70 or dollar meal is $35 in some of these casinos. So yeah. Really worth it. Anything else for the good of the order? I will take a motion. Motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 aye.